Monday! Thanks for joining me for another craft night with friends. We are continuing this week to work on our Stitching Raccoon uh, embroidery sampler. So we have one more stitch to do tonight. It is the long and short stitch and then we'll be working on finishing the actual design on the top. Uh, so thanks again for joining me. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make cute embroidery kits for beginners. And I'm here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. So thanks again for joining me. Uh, let's get working on this embroidery. All right, hello, hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me. Hey, Amy, hey, Deborah. Sharla, Christy, thanks for joining. All right, so let's zoom in down here. Okay, so we are almost completely done with our stitches at the bottom. We've been doing the stitches and then testing them up top here. So right now this top has 14 different or 13 different stitches in uh, tonight it'll have 14 and then uh, uh, after we do after we learn that stitch uh, apply it it is in the tulip right here is where we'll be doing the long and short stitch then we can actually um, fill in the rest of this this piece so a lot of it's the back stitch we got some uh, stem stitch to do yet, all sorts of stitches yet to do to finish this up. So that'll be fun. I'm excited to get going on that. So let's jump right on to this long and short stitch. All right, so I'm putting, oop, did that wrong. I'm putting the small hoop, the inner hoop, down at the bottom. So we are kind of close to the edge here, but I think we'll be fine. the outer hoop around the inner hoop I gotta loosen it a little bit more it's not going around so I hope everyone had a lovely weekend all right let's tighten that and here we are so long and short stitch down here that's what we'll be doing tonight so um, how I like to start the long and short stitch, just so you, if you want to guys, if you want to see what this is going to look like. So here's, here's the cover. So this is the kit. Uh, just so you know, this is actually a free PDF download. Uh, so if you grab um, the link in the profile or um, in the text below, there'll be a uh, link to this. It is uh, a free PDF download, but we do have it available as the kit where it has um, all the supplies in, uh, the floss and the hoop and the fabric, the pre-printed fabric. So I'm using the pre-printed fabric, but it's totally free if you just want to download it. But anyway, so this is the long and short stitch. Uh, it's a great way to fill in a space, um, a little bit different than the satin stitch. So uh, you can fill in larger spaces with the long and short stitch. We use it up here for the tulip. You can also kind of blend colors. This isn't like super duper blended. We just kind of flipped to a different color, but you can, if you change the color gradually, you can make a more blended blended look. So it's a, a good, um, good stitch to know. And if you see all those like super fancy embroideries that are almost, um, that are completely filled in and all the colors like blend to each other, uh, they are doing basically a, a version of this long and, and short stitch there. So this, if you're curious about that, like a thread painting sort of thing, um, you'll get some of that with the long and short stitch here. Okay, so I'm gonna actually start out by drawing a few lines on here. So you could just use a pencil that totally, totally works fine but I find it helpful to actually draw what the beginning of the short and long stitches are. So I'm gonna draw just like what my short stitches are. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have them go vertically, so my lines, my guidelines are gonna go horizontally. So that's gonna be my short stitch there. And then let's go about the same distance up. Those are gonna be the long stitches. And I'm just gonna keep filling this with lines going like the same distance apart. So, all right, this is kind of what we got going on here. I drew three lines in that shape. Uh, this first row I'm gonna call the short stitch. The second row I'm gonna call the long stitch. So we're gonna start, start there. 
Okay. So let's, uh, what colors did I use for this? Okay, we want the red for the bottom row. So this is gonna be the first short and long stitch row. So I'm gonna grab uh, 24 inches or so. Oh, look, I got, got needles all over the place here. <laughs> all right, let's just grab one of these. Um, all right, 24 inches. Oh, thanks for the share, Amy. All right, let's separate our floss here. So I just tap the end so I can just isolate one thread at a time. There we are. Okay, one, two, three. Got lucky, I, I didn't like slide my hand over it after each pass there. I just went for all three and I didn't get any knots or anything. So that, that worked well. All right, let's join our thread. Okay, there we are. So to start out, I'm just gonna weave the ends into the backs of some of these stitches here. Instead of tying a knot, I like weaving in the ends. So we'll just, we'll just weave into this batch that are right here. One. So normally we would be working on the granny square quilt tonight, but I think this week we are going to just go till we have this raccoon, the stitching sampler raccoon completed. Uh oh, got a little knot there. Um, so we'll we'll just work on this this week. Um, I suspect we'll be done before Friday though. Friday is our finish it Friday. That's when we stop whatever we're working on for the first Friday of the new month and we work on another project. And speaking of, it is the new Embroidery of the Month. Uh, so here is the Summer Fox. This is our new embroidery for this month. I know a lot of you guys got it uh, right away um, when it went live yesterday. And uh, ugh, I'm just loving all of the little like lavender bits on there. So this is actually modeled after this fox that was running through our neighborhood. So I'll have to show the video of that later for sure. But like, ugh, I'm excited to stitch that. So we'll be stitching that the third week of the month here. And um, it's gonna be fun. All right, so I'm gonna start. So this is very similar to the long and short stitch is similar to the satin stitch where I'm gonna go from like the bottom to the top. So I'm going to make like vertical stitches here. So I'm considering, you know, this right here, the bottom, we're going to jump over to the top. So just to get started, I'm going to, I'm going to go like from the middle and work my way that way. And then I'm going to work my way this way, just because I'm on like this curve. If this was a square, it'd be easy to start from the beginning. But um, since it's on a curve, it's going to help be helpful to go like in the middle, I think. Let's just start right here. So I'm on that bottom edge. All right, so I'm gonna start with a short stitch. So I'm gonna make all my stitches vertical. So my short stitch is gonna go to that first line. So we're gonna go right in just like straight up. That maybe wasn't straight up enough. You can always bring your thread up like that just to kind of see where it should go. But I'm going in that first, that first row that we did. Okay, so that's our short stitch. We are gonna move on to uh, the long stitch. So we're going to trade off short and long stitches. So I'm going to go right next to the last piece. I'm going to work to the left first just to fill in the space. So right next to it, back at the bottom, just like how we did for the satin stitch, going right back to the bottom. And this will be our long stitch. So for the long stitch, I'm skipping that first row and I'm going to go right up to the second row. And again, I can put this up here. All right, that was about right there. So that's a long stitch. So we have one short one and one long one. Now we've got to go back to a short stitch. We're just going to trade off short and long stitches. I'm always coming back to the bottom and I'm going just like a thread or two of this fabric over. And um, that's, that's, that's it. I want it to be like all like right next to each other. All right, here's a short stitch. I'm going to just go back down to the bottom. I'm following that bottom edge, that curved edge. That was a short. Now let's go along. Yep, about right there. And a short. A 
I do find it helpful to kind of start in the middle sometimes. All right, and a long. And I don't think we have room for any more shorts. So that, um, we're kind of done going from the right to the left. So you can kind of see it's basically, we got like this little kind of jagged edge here. So that's where our longs are. So we have our shorts and our longs. So at the, at the short line here, we're kind of completely filled in. This long part uh, where we jumped up to the second line, we got these little gaps. That's what you want. So uh, keep, keep these little gaps here. Um, all right, so let, we started with a short stitch. I'm just going to come down here and, and go to the rest of the way uh, over here. So let's let's do a long stitch since our first stitch here was a short stitch. Long. There we go. Back to the bottom. Do a short. Bottom. Long. Just going right along the bottom edge there. Oh, the people you shared it with uh, said that they love handwork. Oh, that's cool, Amy. That's that's awesome. Yeah, it's so relaxing. This is just like so incredibly just relaxing. It's a great way to end end the day, I think. All right, let's get another shorty in here. And I think one more long will fill that space and we'll be done on this side. Oop, that one was maybe a little far away, but I think we'll be able to fill in that gap a little bit. All right, so there is our um, uh, little jaggedy edge there. So the bottom edge is completely filled. So where that short row line is, that is completely filled. So that's part, that's done. Um, then this is our kind of our second row that we made at the same time. Those were our long stitches. Those have those little gaps in between. That's, that's exactly what we want. All right. So that's row one. Uh, for row two, uh, we are going to jump up to uh, um, the next, the next level. So at this point, we are only going to be doing long stitches. And we can also change color at this point. So I did change color in the design. So let's let's do that now. I'm going to weave in this end. So this is what's fun about this long and short stitch. You can you can change colors each row and get a different a different effect. So I could keep going with the red and it would just be filling in the space with red. That's totally fine. We'll actually be doing that for the tulip. We'll do a few rows of this red. But for down here, I want to show you how you can change change color with each row. So, all right, let's grab, oh, that's not enough. I guess we're gonna have to cut a new piece. So these are the same colors that we're gonna use for the tulip up at the top. So let's get our 24 inches or so. Get a few more threads going. I'm using three strands of floss for all this. It might be seem weird that we're actually separating these threads, but it's actually designed to do this, the uh, embroidery floss. Uh, because the different number of strands um, gives you a different thickness to your stitch. So the more strands of floss you have, the thicker your stitch is. Um, so it's pretty common to actually separate it to three strands or two strands. It gives you just a, like a little thinner stitch. All right, all right. Get these together again. Zoop. All right. I'm gonna just trim these ends. They're kind of all over the place. And we will thread this. I'm using that pinch method of threading where I just kind of get those ends together and pinch them in my fingers. And then I gradually unpinch. And the moment I can see that little color of my floss there, I, I stick my needle right through my fingers and just kind of squish down. And that, that uh, kind of forces the thread through the needle. All right, let's weave in the ends here again. And we will start that next row. Again, you could just keep going with the red. That would be fine. Um, a reason to, to like do this 
instead of the satin stitch is if you're feeling a really large shape. So this is kind of a small shape, but if we were feeling like a large shape like this, we wouldn't want to do a satin stitch where we have a thread go that far. It would just be really loose. So you would do like these smaller long and short stitches um, to kind of give the effect of it being completely filled. All right, let's do row two. And uh, we can start on either side. Let's just start kind of where we left off on the, on the right side here. Um, so now, actually maybe we just start in the middle kind of like how we did. That was kind of helpful because on the edge it's a little confusing with these curved shapes. Like where actually is the edge? I don't know. Um, so it's been kind of helpful to start in the, little, in the middle here. Um, after the first row, we are no longer doing short stitches. They are always going to be long stitches until we like hit the top edge. Then it'll, we'll just be filling in the gap. So right here, we're actually going to make long stitches each time. And you can actually do it by, um, well, let's just start one. Let's start in the middle. Let's, let's do the long, a long stitch here. So I'm starting at one of these, at one of these short stitches. I'm starting in between those gaps that we left um, with those long stitches. And then we're going to go to the next row up. Always a long stitch now. So about right there to that next line. And there we go. So that's our first first stitch. So we we just need to go into all these gaps and do long stitches and leave um, another gap. Or we could actually keep filling it in at the same time. So I could do a long stitch here, then a long stitch to the next one, and then a long stitch here, like stair stepping. But I think the way I'll do it th tonight is just we'll do all of the um, these next row ones. So, but remember we're doing a long stitch every single time. So because I'm kind of skipping that previous long stitch, we're going to have those those gaps again. That's what we want. Those gaps are for when we do the next the next row. All right, and then kind of the bottom edge here. Go up as far as we can out on that edge. Yeah, that looks good. And let's get this row or to the end of the other row on row on this side. That's cool, Amy. Amy says that one of the ladies in her featherweight group is doing the herb uh, embroidery. If she doesn't post it, I'll ask her if I can in the group. Oh, that'd be awesome, Amy. I'd love to see it. The herb. Um... Oh, doing the herbs. The um, not the bouquet. The the uh, the um, little herbs that we did on the apron earlier. Fun. Oh, that's exciting. I want to make more of those. Those are fun to do. I love stitching on those aprons, too. All right, there we go. So that is row two here. So now we could change color again if we wanted to. Like I could, um, what we could have done is done like maybe a red and then like a, 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 like a dark orange and then gone into this kind of light gold color. Uh, then it would have blended a little bit more um, if you really want to kind of blend colors together. But um, we're just kind of making this quick leap uh, in colors, just so you can see the change in the um, in the row. So let's just keep going, uh, like how it is in the in the uh, directions here. So I have the directions, or the um, these aren't the directions. We actually do have stitch instructions that that come with it as well. Uh, plus, we have videos for all these. Um, but uh, I'm just going by kind of what they what's here. So we're gonna stick with this color. So we can start on this side too. So um, this one, we're basically doing the long stitches again. I'll start in the middle again. That's kind of fun. So down in that gap, we're in a gap again. Let's go to the next line up. And the next line up is actually the top edge. So we're just going to the top edge. If this is a larger shape, you would have drawn more of those lines and um, you would just be going to the next line up. But um, since we're out of lines, we're just going to go to that top edge. And I'm going to go just in the gaps again and always, always long stitches at this point again, where you go up two lines worth. To the top of the line. And we got kind of like this little itty bitty gap here. So we're going to fill that in too. All right, and let's 
finish the row on the opposite side here. Okay, all the way up. You can see me draw with my the tip of my needle. I'm kind of like drawing the path of where that's going to end up. Like, so I'm starting here, kind of near, 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 near. Okay, hit the end. That's where we go to just kind of keep straight. Okay, that's the next row. And for the last row of this, we just have to fill in those little itty bitty gaps that we kind of left. I'm just going to start in the middle again. Uh, okay, so we're going to just, these are kind of like short stitches, kind of like how we started at the bottom. They would be long stitches, except for where we've hit the edge. So we're, we're keeping them, keeping them short. All right, one more here. So again, we could have changed color again too. Um, you can change color each row if you want. And if you wanted to change, you know, right from the beginning, we could have done just all the short stitches first and then done a new color for the long stitches next to it. But I like doing the short and long at the same time for that first row. Eh, I don't, I don't, I think we got it all. I don't think we, well, this one could use maybe a teeny, 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 tiny stitch. Boop. Eh, not sure we needed that, but there we go. There is our filled in shape uh, using the long and short stitch. So not quite as satiny as doing um, the satin stitch where you go the full length of the shape. But again, this would be really difficult to fill a large space because all of those stitches would be going like a whole big distance and they'd be really, really loose. So this is another alternative to that. This is also how people do the complete like thread painting look. Um, there may be um, a lot of times for thread painting, that's where you just kind of blend all the colors together magically. It looks really advanced and it looks really pretty. Uh, you see like dog portraits and stuff done with that. Uh, how we would do that differently is you'd probably just use like one strand of floss. We're using three, so we're able to fill it in a whole lot quicker. But you'd use one strand of, of floss and you can be a little bit more organic with the line. So I'm, I'm going like straight vertical for all of these. You can kind of shimmy it a little bit so they can be a little bit more angular as long as you fill in enough stitches. It's a little bit more organic and free form uh, versus this straight like kind of filling the in the gap vertical way of doing it. But you're still kind of doing short stitches and then longer ones and you're just kind of trading them off a little bit and um, filling in more colors. So this is kind of the first um, go around, the first step at that hefty, nice um, painted embroidery look. All right, let's weave in the end and uh, let's get that tulip stitch. So the tulip is using, in this design, is using the short and long stitch. And we're actually doing a few more rows than we did here. So that'll be kind of fun. So here's the tulip um, right here. So I don't know if you guys can quite see, but there's uh, a little white area that's kind of the showing that the line difference. So we're actually doing like a short and long for that first row. Then we're doing another long and uh, another long. So we're doing like three rows of long and then just having like the tip be that um, gold color. So that'll be kind of fun. Um, so same colors. I mean, you could really do whatever color you like. But we are going to do those same colors. So here we are. I'm excited. I'm really actually excited to start um, filling in the rest of this piece. But look, we totally have the bottom done. That's exciting. So we've done each of these stitches. Uh, I would suggest um, taking, you could take a permanent marker, like um, uh, we have these, these like micron pens in the shop. This is actually a little thicker one. I like the, the zero one. Um, this is a zero 05, but zero 01 is a little bit thinner. Um, I would go actually, I mean, if you're not going to get this wet or anything, um, you'll be fine with just um, this text. But if this does get wet, uh, if you're using the kit, it's semi permanent. So uh, this will fade significantly if you get it wet. Uh, so I would, just to be safe, go over it with um, a, you know one of these permanent markers or something. Otherwise, you're fine. Um, 
if you're using the PDF version, you could go ahead and write uh, the name of each stitch next to it or on top. I think that'd be helpful. Just, you know, this is a sampler, so you can refer back to it on what each of the stitches is called. And then you can also see them up here, but we don't have them labeled up here, but um, it'd be a good time probably to write those in. Let's, uh, it's fun to have that done though. All right, getting the top part in here. It's pretty loose. I'm just tightening it enough so that it won't pop apart and now I'm gonna get the fabric all kind of taut in here. Ooh, a little bloop on the top, let's pull that. All right, tighten a little bit more. Hello, Adrian. Oh, you have the herbs, Amy, and you think you're gonna do a table runner quilt. Ooh, so cute. Oh, you'll have to share that when you're done. That sounds like a really, really fun project. We should do a table runner here sometime. That'd be fun. Um, all right, so I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna just get my water soluble marker. You could totally use a pencil. That's what I've used. Um, uh, we used it earlier for something. Um, anyway, I sometimes use, oh, I trace, I trace designs a lot of times. So this is, uh, we started tracing the PDF just so I could show you how to trace and um, trace like the design on a fabric. And I, I just used a mechanical pencil, just a cheap mechanical pencil. I love that. Um, it stays really well and you can stitch right over it. Um, but I do like my water soluble marker as well. And we got some other marks that we'll want to get rid of. So this is fine. All right, so let's draw those lines. Let's do, okay, the short line. This can be however you wanna draw them too. It doesn't have to be exact like how I have it on, on um, the design here. I think I'm just gonna make them about that far apart. Let's just draw our pile of lines here. Let's see. One, two, three, and then I think just one more in there is probably fine. So there we go. Kind of have it divvied up. And these don't actually have to be the same distance either. You could vary it if you really wanted to. Um, all right, so we're gonna start at the bottom with our short stitches. We'll do the short and long for the first kind of two rows and then we'll keep doing the long ones after that. So let's grab a, um, I think this is one of the longer pieces of red. Let's use that. Use that pinch method. So again, pinching, and then as I unpinch, the moment I see that thread, squish the um, needle right down through your fingers. Okay, so I think I'll weave in the backs of these stitches. They're kind of available to me to do that. So let's, versus tying a knot again, I'm just weaving in and out of the backs of these stitches. Okay, row one. So now this is a curved shape again, and I find it a little difficult to start way at the edge, um, just to know exactly kind of like where where to start. So I'm, I'm just gonna start sort of near the edge, but not all the way over. So I can still see where a short and long stitch would go. So, all right, I'm gonna start with my short. So going just the first row. All right, then going right next to that on my bottom edge, and we'll do the long stitch. That looks good. All right, bottom, bottom edge again. Do a short. So imagine, I mean, this, this takes a while to fill in a shape, right? Um, so Imagine doing it with just one strand of floss. That's like how thread painting is with just like the single, single strand. I think I can get one more itty bitty short one here. And technically I think we'd have like one here for the other long. But yeah, thread painting can take zillions of hours to do. All right, going back over here, let's do the long on this side. Great. 
great. And short. Trading off short and long for the first row. Trying to keep those long ones as straight as possible. Or maybe feeling a hair crooked. fun to fill in a shape like this though. Hey, and we'll have the, the top of this tulip done by tonight. That'll be fun. Maybe we start, um, maybe we finish up that, the rest of this tulip, if we have time um, tonight. Uh-oh, got a little knot in there. Uh, see if I can loosen that. Boo! Alright. Get some slack here. Usually I can just stick my needle in the loop of that knot and it'll help, there we go, help release it. That knot was pretty tight though, it didn't have a real big loop there. Okay, short. short in there? I don't think so. I think we're done. Okay, next row. Um, let's just start on this edge here. So now we're doing only longs. I'm still using red for, for this next row, uh, but we're only going to do long stitches from here on out. Oops, and I feel like I got another knot back here. Man, just doesn't like that one spot. It's looping around itself and getting caught. We're going to be past that part of that thread though soon. All right, just longs now. So um, not this row, but the next one up, but I'm hitting this edge here. So I'm not going to the line. I'm just going to where I hit the edge. All right, and then we're only going in the gaps, really. So the gaps made um, by those short stitches. Ugh, this does get relaxing though, just filling in a sp big space like this. This is where you can just zen and zen out, zone out. <laughs> Thank you, I appreciate that. Uh, Toka, hello. <laughs> we are getting there with this design. So this is our last of the 14 stitches here. Uh, just a reminder, um, Oh, when you stitch by yourself, do you say long and short and long and short out loud? I sure do. <laughs> I say everything uh, like just to make sure that I got it right. <laughs> but just a reminder, this is a free pattern. We do have a kit um, for sale for it um, as well. But uh, the pattern itself is free as a digital download. And it also comes with 14 days emails um, of a day for each stitch. So there's, there's 14 stitches that we learned down here uh, last week. We're finishing up this week. And um, all those 14 stitches are used up top here. And we've gone th through each of them here with the last one being, being this one. And um, yeah, so if you want to learn some embroidery, I got you for that. All right, that row is done. Let's jump up to the next row. So again, filling in these gaps. Ooh, I'm going to run out of floss maybe. So technically I want to go all the way up to that last line here, but I'm 
if I go if I'm just going vertical, I'm hitting the edge, so edge wins over going all the way up to that line. But again, we're just kind of filling in the gaps with just long stitches. Alright, so that one goes all the way up to the line. So the next row, we are going to switch colors to the gold, or that that goldenrod color. Ooh, I'm going to have just enough floss, I think, of this red. But yeah, so we'll switch to that other color. Again, you could you could have changed these colors more gradually, like just um, if you had like maybe four different colors of floss where they just gradually get to more and more to the color, um, then you'd have a way more blended blended look. But I kind of like um, kind of like having just these yellow tipped, gold tipped uh, tulips here. We're going to hit some edges here. Yep, that one's just going up to an edge. And this one is to our last little gap fill here. All right, so that is it for the red. We are going to be switching to the that uh, yellow gold color, that golden rod color. So let's weave in the ends. It's all filled in on the back too. Nice solid block of color. All right, let's grab the other half of that gold, goldenrod. Okay, there we are. Thread that, weave it in, I guess. One, two. Oh, Gretchen says, yikes, I have to go snuggle a six-year-old. She's too excited for school. Oh, cute. That's fun. Okay, what side did I end up on? All the way to the left here. All right, so I'm gonna start on the left. Um, all right, so I think uh, this is probably our first one here. Again, these are long stitches or hitting the side stitches. This one I hit an edge. Okay, our next edge is going all the way to the top here. So still filling in these gaps. have that last little row that we can finish um, filling in. And this is the only spot in this design that we're using the long and short stitch, so we will be done uh, with the long and short stitch um, when we're done with this little tulip. Hitting an edge there, and eh, I think I think we have a tiny little bit of yellow that we could do, like a tiny stitch we could do here. I think, tiny little edge left. There we go. Uh oh, another knot. It's a knotty night. Jeez. There we are. All right, so we just have the last uh, last row that will fill in those the tops. So these will be at the. We'll start them at the tops of all these little red bits yet. Just going to the edge, filling in those gaps. Fun, so that didn't take too long, but we're filling in a whole, whole space here. It's fun. But yeah, if you're doing a, a piece with a lot of long and short stitches, settle in, because it's going to take some time, that's for sure. All right, done. That is the uh, short and long stitch on our little tulip there. So fun. 
Okay, I'm really liking that. Let's weave in the end and tulip, the head of the tulip at least, will be done. So I think uh, we have we have uh, like 20 minutes or so left here. I'm typically on for an hour. Um, so we, we go from 8.30 to 9.30 central time. And uh, we have enough time to work on this top some more. So our bottom, uh, the sampler part is completely done. Let's just take a peek at everything again. So we've, we've finished our bottom. I may want to go um, through and write um, the names of each stitch on here just to be safe because if, if this does get wet, the text um, will fade quite a bit. So just putting a permanent marker over that I think will will be good, especially since I have like some water soluble marker from when we were doing French knots and playing around that I want to get rid of. Um, but yeah, so this now has 14 different stitches in the top as well, and now we just have to finish it. So, um, like I said, I think, let, why don't we start, let's let's finish the tulip, then we'll have one thing done at least. Um, maybe after that, I'm just seeing we have all these French knots up there, we could, that, that would have this, um, the Queen Anne's lace completely done at that point too. So, dang, if we can get like, the plants done, then that'd be good. So let's get that back in the hoop. Then I really do want to finish um, finish this raccoon. So uh, tomorrow, what we'll probably do is finish up this raccoon, get as far as we can on that. Um, let's see, that'll be Tuesday. And then Wednesday, maybe we can finish the rest of this top. And then we got all this text down here, stitch the day away. So we have that to do yet as well. So we'll probably be working on this through Thursday yet. Um, we'll see. All right, actually, I'm gonna move that down a little bit. Otherwise, I won't be able to do those French knots. Okay, so you can look back at the design. This comes with the PDF as well, the free PDF. Um, but the, the stem stitch is the tulip leaves and stem. So we'll be using the stem stitch. That's, uh, that's this one down here. Um, so we'll, we'll be using that guy here. We just gotta get some of that dark green. Again, that's our fresh basil color. Get this feller in the hoop again. Oh, actually, I do like um, it a little looser for the stem stitch, so I'm, that's a little uh, looser there. Okay, I think we need a new, new piece of thread. Geez, we, we have a whole color we haven't used yet. Oh, this is the outline of, this is the outline of the, the whole um, raccoon. So we're, we're not that far, that's why we haven't used that yet. I'm like, sheesh, what the heck? We went through 14 stitches and still haven't used a whole whole color and nope, that's for the raccoon body. We did not get that far yet. All right, let's get our um, few strands of floss here. Just isolating them one at a time again. I had this idea, like what if I kept holding it in my hand like this, but I'm afraid it's going to turn into the knots, but let's give it a try. So here's here's my second strand. Let's kind of line it up. Pull that out. <laughs> that seemed to work so far, and let's just grab the third right away. It's a little awkward, but it's kind of working. Hey, <laughs> all right. There, now I'm holding them all at the same time. I don't have to put them together again. Ha! hacked that. That's nice. All right, I'll be trying that. I think I might get tangled every once in a while, but that time it worked really well. Okay. Um, all right, so I think I'm going to start at the top of the um, leaf here and then come back down to the center and then then start right there and go up. So we're just going to zoop, zoop. Okay, so let's weave in the back of these stitches for our starting point. Look how our back is nice and clean yet, and that's because we're weaving in the ends versus tying knots. Nothing's getting caught on anything. Two, three. Oh, Amy's asking how was John's birthday? Uh, we went for a yummy lunch or a yummy fancy coffee. Fancy, fancy coffee we had on, on John's birthday. 
he got like some latte that had like cumin in and uh, I don't know it was so freaking good though um I had a Turkish coffee which was delicious as well I didn't get a latte but his latte was pretty dang amazing so we did do we did get that all right I'm gonna come up at the top so I always go like from left to right for for this so I'm just kind of rotating uh, and I'm keeping my thread down even though we kind of go with the arc typically so the arc's going this way I could go with the thread up but we've been kind of going down for this whole time so I'm gonna just keep it like that so I'm going a couple stitches like two stitch lengths away basically and then coming up in the middle of of that line this is just a review of the stem stitch with the thread going underneath and we can pull through thread is still underneath there we are all right next stitch go like two stitch lengths away so we have that and then this another stitch length basically and then coming up where that last one ended keeping that thread underneath there we are so just continuing down the line it was fun. I mean, we actually ended up just cleaning his office, which sounds crazy, but uh, it's nicer now, and we got rid of a lot of stuff, and it, it feels refreshing. So a good way to start another year <laughs> with a clean, clean little home office space. Um, so I guess maybe not everyone's birthday cup of tea, but it was fun. And we, we went to the museum that's that's here, the Minneapolis Institute of Art, uh, the day before. So we kind of, that was kind of part of his birthday too. All right. And last stitch down at the bottom. Okay, so we need to actually start this next row at the bottom here, but I can't start there because I my last stitch went in there so if I come back in the same hole it'll pull that stitch out so what I have to do is go on the back go like around some stitches that are already there and then that kind of locks it in place so now I can come up at the last stitch because we've wrapped around those other stitches all right now let's finish off the stem stitch by going up that row and then we're done with the stem stitch as well so we'll be done with two different stitches tonight. The oh, and actually we finished the feather stitch already. We that's um, we used the feather stitch on uh, this Queen Anne's lace, the little like ferny um, leaves there. That's the feather stitch. We're done with the split stitch. We did the split stitch for all of the rest of the green, like the stem parts in the uh, um, Queen Anne's lace. So that's done. Two stitches done. Um, the long and short stitch is done and I think this running stitch we're done with that as well so we actually have four stitches right now completely done um, oh and the blanket stitch so that's five completely done blanket stitch goes around this blanket here so this will be our sixth completely finished stitch from this from the sampler so we won't have to do this stitch anymore Kind of fun to do this many different stitches in one small little piece like this it's just neat to see them all they all just have a little bit different of a look to them all these different outline -y stitches so the trick for the stem stitch again is to go in and out in the same motion it is really difficult if you don't go in and out in the same motion um, if you like go all the way down and try and come all the way back up it's it's difficult so do that sewing method where you go in and out in the same motion and I think we're gonna add that one extra stitch to thicken this up so like here it's difficult to get back up in there but I want to do that last little kind of like half stitch there we go then it's kind of the same thickness so that stem stitch gives you kind of that like little swirly looking line it's really kind of pretty I, I really love it and that's that for the uh, um, stem stitch. Let's weave in the end and uh, let's try and get those French knots done on the Queen Anne's lace. That'd be nice. And we're kind of done with this little area over here. Got some grass and stuff down at the bottom. Gosh, we really could get that right now, couldn't we? Maybe I do that instead. I know I just wove in this end, but I do have some green on this left. And maybe I just jump down and get those little strands of grass. We're going to do that. Maybe we'll do that instead of those French knots. So let's just trim this edge up nice again. 
Already got the screen on the needle. Let's do that. Ugh, Amy says, I still love the whipped backstitch. Yes, um, we need to do more of that. That was really, really fun. <laughs> yep, we don't need, we don't have the whip backstitch in this sampler. That would have been fun. All right, if there was a 15th stitch, it's kind of a combo stitch, um, the whipped backstitch, but it's kind of fun. All right, I'm just kind of traveling to get into position here because the, um, the first stitch I want to do is here. So I think this is just the backstitch. Yeah, I'm just looking at the design again. So let's let's um, just do a couple back stitches. I think we can get like maybe three back stitches. Kind of working my way from left to right a little bit now. All right, so let's uh, let's head over here and get those. So I'm just gonna, instead of jumping over there, I'm gonna just kind of jump behind some stitches then it'll kind of secure them down. Um, so there we go. Let's get these. I don't know if I'll have enough thread to get those guys up there. That'd be kind of a big bummer, but oh well. We'll just get them later with another piece of thread. Yeah, I'll have to introduce some more new stitches on um, some of our kits or embroidery of the months or something. That'd be that'd be fun too. Like the whip, the whipped back stitch. A little bit away from my my fourteen standard stitches. They're basic stitches that I like using. Um, I almost exclusively use just these fourteen stitches in um, in my designs, just because they're um, good ones to learn. They're they're in most um, or a lot of embroidery patterns um, but it is fun to learn some of those kind of like specialty ones or a little bit more advanced ones uh, every once in a while so that'd be that'd be fun to do do a few more all right I think I am gonna just jump up to this next grass we have all the stitches um, in that foot which will hold down this jump a little bit because I, I really want to be able to get um, these last two little blades of grass in with, with this piece of floss that I have, that'd be great. We have just enough, so that's awesome. I think, actually, I think we'll probably stop here for the night um, and we'll start fresh tomorrow with those those chain or those um, French knots I, I would like to get it, it'd be it'd be a bummer to like leave those hanging there without finishing them up uh, before moving on to like the raccoon so I think tomorrow um, tomorrow when I'm live here again I will start here I'll start by getting all those little French French knot fellers up there uh, because then we're kind of done we're done with this section I mean we still have the text to do but we'll do all that at once so we'd be done with here and then we can focus on the um, raccoon which would be awesome I'd love to get the outline in because I'm just it's ugh, I hate letting him sit just all ghostly like that like not stitched I want uh, usually when I um, work on an embroidery pattern I, I start with like the main character just because it's so fun and I want to get him done uh, but we were going through the stitches, so we didn't do it that way. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm itching to get his outline in. So tomorrow we'll, we'll quickly finish these French knots, and then I think we'll work on his outline, which will be that last color, that thunder um, gray color. And then, you know, fill in all of his eyes and all the rest of him. I'm excited to work on, work on him tomorrow. So it'll be the raccoon tomorrow and those French knots uh, awesome, so we made some progress today finishing those bottom stitches. I think I am going to take this out. Sometimes I take my um, piece out of the hoop when I'm not working on it because it helps decrease um, the creases <laughs> uh, from the from the hoop. So it can just like kind of settle and, and be flat again there. But it is coming together and we've learned all of those 14 stitches. I am super excited about that. 
All right, again, you guys, this is a free pattern. Uh, we have a link in um, the description and also in um, on TikTok in the profile uh, to this free pattern. And you also get um, videos and an email on how to do each of ones of these stitches. Uh, so you'll always have that as a reference, especially if you miss, missed um, one of the days that we worked on these stitches. It also comes as a kit if you don't want to trace the design. Um, we have the kit that comes with everything, everything in it, um, the hoop, the pre-printed fabric, all the floss, um, instructions, all of it. And I have to share again the embroidery of the month for August. Ugh, it is our little summer fox design. Kind of, kind of chilling with this little raccoon. <laughs> Uh, he doesn't have clothes on like the raccoon does though, but he is in you know, the little lavender field. We, the, what inspired this is we had a fox in our backyard about a month ago and uh, my husband filmed a bunch of it and he, he put it on a reel on, on Instagram. So I'll have to share, share that again sometime. Maybe I'll, um, do a little, um, TikTok that has shows, um, the fox video with with this as the inspiration um, together, or with the fox as the inspiration for this, that'd be kind of a fun little thing. So I'll put that together, um, just so you can see, because he was like a skinny little fox with his little summer coat on. It was just really fun. So that is live now. If you were looking into that, and that's the deal, everyone. All right, all right. Hello again. Oops, hold on. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so thanks again for joining me here tonight. Again, we'll, we'll be back tomorrow to work on those French knots and the raccoon, but it's coming together. Uh, it's been fun uh, doing all these stitches with you uh, last week, and then again, we'll work on them this week as well. So thanks again, guys. Uh, thanks for chit-chatting in the comments, and I will see you tomorrow here at 8.30 p.m. Central. Good night.